the entire viewing experience of Terrifier 3 in 10 seconds. Alright, before I get into reviewing Terrifier 3, I think context is very important for a lot of things that I am going to mention in this review. I just did a video talking about Art the Clown and a lot of the reasons why I do not believe he is an iconic killer like a lot of people want to label him. You can check that video out here if you're interested in it at all. Someone in the comments mentioned the fact that it is important to keep in mind that Terrifier, all of the films, the multiple films, which this is being the sixth time that Art the Clown is on screen, have all been very low budget films, so it's very important to keep that in mind. It is not one of the big Friday the 13th or Halloween franchise big budget films. And so with that in mind, yes, I will say it is very impressive. The things that Damien Leone is able to pull off in the Terrifier films, specifically the feature length films, because they are very small budgets, specifically the first Terrifier film, which is, was the lowest budget. That being said, I kind of brought up in the video I just done talking about Art the Clown that I thought conceptually there was more meat in the short films and the idea. And then once we got into the feature length films, we didn't add any meat or any story to this character or this icon, but we added budget to gore and kills. So all the money went there and to pad this gigantic runtime, which so I kind of made that point in my video. But just to double down on that, I want to just clarify the fact that as I said, it is impressive some of the things that he pulled off in here. I'll give him that, but he has a budget of $2 million this time around, and that is not a huge amount of money. It's not a gigantic amount of money, but let me just talk about a few films that have made history and made genuine icons or genuine iconic horror film legends come to life in their first film, first time on screen, not sixth time on screen with a $2 million budget and have stood the test of time and spawned many, many films to come afterwards. Let's start with the first, the, in my opinion, the granddaddy of the iconic horror legends, Michael Myers. Let's talk about the first Halloween film adjusted for inflation. That film budget for the first Halloween film is under $2 million, about 1.8, if I remember correctly, when I looked up $1.8 million to bring an icon to life and that is still considered one of the best horror films of all time in my opinion it's one of its top three best horror films of all time and that just doubles down in my opinion on my point that it doesn't take a bunch of money and gore to make a classic icon what i was trying to make my point with art the clown is that he didn't put any extra effort into the writing of the character art the clown doesn't do anything iconic in terms of character what makes the films iconic is just more and more and more blood all right let's throw out a few more films real quick how about the original friday the 13th another icon now i can see the argument that the first film did not necessarily spawn jason however i believe the first film created enough backstory and lore to spawn all the numerous sequels that we have yes two and three are really the birth of the jason as we know him However, again, as I'm trying to make this point, there's enough writing and character development in the first Friday the 13th, which Jason is barely in, to spawn a whole lifetime of sequels. And that was made for, adjusted for inflation, a $2.1 million budget. And that has some famous kills from Tom Savini himself. How about another one? Since we're talking about icons and horror legends and how, you know, $2 million is not enough, to bring a legend to life. What about one of the most legendary gore hound icon, horror icons of all time, uh, Leatherface. The original Texas Chainsaw Massacre brought Leatherface to life on a budget of, adjusted for inflation, $895,000. That's under a million dollars. Under one million dollars. And look at, what kind of a movie 
came from it. Still considered one of the greatest films of all time, depending on who you talk to. I mean, most of the time, it's going to be Exorcist, Texas Chainsaw, Halloween. One of those is going to be up there. And the, now, The Exorcist was not a tiny budget. However, we have so many horror icons that were birthed on their first film. Not their second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth film, but on their first film for under $2 million. The first Insidious film was on, made on a budget of $1.5 million. Upgrade, a recent film that did such a great job at not just creating a cool story and a new like horror sci-fi film, but building an entire world with a lot of science fiction tech, a lot of great pieces put in there. The film looks good. It doesn't feel tiny budget at all. You can tell it had a budget, like a tight budget, but it's such a grand film, grand concept, $3 million. Now, yes, it's a million dollars more and you could do it all with a million dollars. Sure. But the jump from 2 million to 3 million to build an entire world also in one film, I bring all those up just to make the point that as I've kind of mentioned before, I feel like we need to stop making excuses for films like Terrifier 3 and saying, oh, you know, he didn't have this to work with, or he did this and this, or he did the effects and he directed, or he did the effects and he wrote and directed, or Time Crunch, or Money, or this, or et cetera, et cetera. This is the sixth time that Art the Clown has been on screen, and I'm sorry, but I demand better writing. For a film that has a $2 million budget, this much of a hardcore fan base, and this long of a runtime, it needs some more meat. And I don't just mean core. All right, all that being said, let's get into the positives about Terrifier 3, things I did really enjoy about this film. Kicking things off, I actually will say I did enjoy Art the Clown much more in this film. I do believe that Damien Leone did give us more backstory, more details, and more, not a ton, not enough, but more character work with Art the Clown. I actually feel like I enjoyed his presence in the film more and now that's kind of my biggest thing when i'm talking about character is like not just stuff he does not just catchphrases but can i feel his personality in the film do i feel him interacting with other characters is he unique what's he bringing to the table when i think of art the clown what do i think of not just and and just that over and over again in terrifier 3 i believe we actually got a little bit more depth to the character. I personally enjoyed some of the more serious Art the Clown moments. And I actually must commend the actor who plays Art the Clown because there are some moments in here where he has this sort of uh, angry at the world expression and tone. And I think that he does a really good job conveying that. There also are some much more humorous scenes in here with Art the Clown where he is working like uh i guess playing with the people that he's interacting with more which i think was always the idea in these films but i don't really ever feel like i got it until this film i actually got a scene where i felt like he was genuinely interacting with people and having fun not just honking a horn while they go okay do, do you need something that is not interaction that's not human interaction that's not a funny scene that's just a person standing there staring at him while he's being annoying in Terrifier 3, we do actually get more characters with some better actors here and there where they actually are interacting with Art the Clown. Specifically, I want to talk about two scenes where I actually really enjoyed Art the Clown. The first is the bar scene, and I'm not going to go into too much detail, but you know, if you've seen the trailer that Art dresses up like Santa, and there's a moment in the bar where he sees the guy dressed up like Santa, and he gets really excited, and he comes in, and he acts like he's genuinely like a fan of Santa. And I thought that moment was hilarious. He did a really good job actually seeming like he was excited to see Santa. And he plays with the character, like the actors a little bit here and there. Like he plays with the people in the bar and toys with them. Like he genuinely is like messing with them. It, it's really funny. It leads to some good laughs. There's some better actors in that scene. So there's a little bit more to play off of also. And then the scene in the mall. When he is being Santa and he's sitting in the chair and security comes and asks him to leave and Art points up to there's a moment. And again, this could be considered maybe a minor spoiler, but I really don't think it is. If you've seen the trailer, you know, he just looks like Santa, you know, he's in the mall. But there's a scene where he's sitting in the chair. Security asks him to leave 
and he points up at the sign that says Santa, and he's like, like, I'm Santa. I should be here. That moment I thought was really funny. Again, it felt genuinely like he was going off of the actor. So like someone would say something, like security asking him to leave, and then he would actually like react to them. It felt like human interaction. I feel like we don't get that in these films at all. It's just him doing something and people being like statue people with terrible dialogue, not acting normal at all. There were some few scenes here that made me genuinely laugh. Another positive is going to be the makeup effects in here. And I really want to clarify that I am specifically talking about the makeup effects in here. Because I'll get into my negatives in a minute, but just talking about the positives, the makeup in here does look really good. The prosthetics look really good. A lot of the facial prosthetics and a lot of the uh, you know teeth and jaws and eyes that are sunken in and different things like that all look top notch in here, as well as a lot of the body parts on the ground and pieces that are shown thrown here and there. The kills also. Well, don't blow me away. Are some good kills in here. I'm going to again get into my negatives, but there are some inventive ideas in here. And you know, if you're looking for basically just a bunch of kills, there are a lot of them in here. So I mean, that's what you're going into these movies for, for the most part. And there are quite a few of them. It doesn't hold back. All right, let's talk about the negatives. And you know, I just I could talk about so many negative things about this film, honestly, and I could go on forever and ever and ever. If it's not clear by now, I don't think Terrifier 3 is a very good film, and I know I'm just sitting on an island. It makes me feel crazy when I see that like 80% Rotten Tomatoes score up there. I went in with open eyes. I really tried to give it the time of day. And here's the craziest thing, right? The audience, the people that I was watching this film with, also, we're not really enjoying it. Like I could tell they weren't really enjoying it. People were getting up to pee. They were taking their time. People were chatting and like not like laughing about the go. Like people were not really having a good time. After the film, I heard people talk, saying negative things, you know, over some conversations about things I agree with. Also kind of going, meh, meh, meh. Like they weren't really enjoying it. Now you could just say, okay, my audience isn't enjoying it. Or I think there's just something to be said about everybody hyping this movie to such a crazy extent that no one wants to say anything negative about it. It's not a good movie. If you just want kills and art the clown, it's there for you, but it's not a good film. The writing is absolutely terrible. It's atrocious. And I think that that's just, there's just no excuse for a third film in a feature length franchise. There's just no excuse for this bad of writing. The acting is terrible. I mean, they have to be able to hire better, better actors. I honestly, you know, with the exception of a couple of performances here and there, everyone's pretty bad. The dialogue is so terrible. And not only is it just bad, but it just is useless. Like, it's absolutely useless dialogue. You could, it's exposition, it's all exposition, carrying the story forward, but at the same time, doing nothing. It's so empty, yet important to the plot. But you could take it out and nothing would change. And that just goes to show you how weak of a story it is, because to have exposition so essential to moving things forward, but then still not end up anywhere, just shows how weak your story is when you're developing it. The music also is just really not good in this film. And I actually enjoyed it way more in Terrifier 2. You've still got the Terrifier theme in here, which is that reminiscent 80s synth type stuff. But the rest of the music honestly sucks. And the Christmas music, especially, holy cow, it's bad. It lo it sounds like elevator stock music. And it's like, everyone wants to make excuse after excuse after excuse. That's what he was going for. So if I just go for a movie where everything is really crappy, are you just going to be like, that's what he wanted to do? Or are you going to be like, no, this movie sucks. I don't enjoy it. The music is terrible. It doesn't put me in the Christmas spirit at all. It sounds awful. Some of it genuinely is like, obnoxiously bad sounding and then there's this stupid art the clown song that they wrote in here it's in the credits and halfway through the film and it just like it doesn't feel on the nose the movie is not self-aware enough or fun enough to have a song like that it just is a two hour and like five minute long film and it's taking itself so seriously in so many places, but then also tries to be fun. I really wanted some Christmas ambiance in our Terrifier 3. I really wanted that. I didn't get it. There's Christmas lights. It doesn't feel like Christmas. It doesn't feel cold. 
The snow doesn't do anything. There's not snow until the end of the film. None of that like Christmas horror ambience that we watch like a Christmas horror film is there. None of it. It just doesn't, doesn't even make me feel like it's really around Christmas time. Like Christmas absolutely could have not been in this film at all. It does nothing for the film. It just was a, a stick that they wanted to throw in there because they did Halloween and so they wanted to do Christmas. That's it. That feels exactly what it is. Like we're going to do exactly the same thing again, but this time at Christmas time. Let's talk about the gore, the practical effects work here. Now, while I've said it, I want to commend anyone who puts in the effort to try to do practical effects in their film, I do absolutely think that that should be recognized. It's a lot of work. I know it's a lot of time and I want to so badly praise all the practical effects work in here. But for me, it just doesn't do anything. It looks like paint half the time, but sometimes the blood's black. Sometimes it's like Suspiria red. Sometimes, and then like, if that's what you're going for, cool, I guess. But I just don't understand why. But then it's also, like I said, it's uneven. Sometimes the skin looks like glossy and and waxy sometimes it looks like like foam sometimes like the bodies shake and they don't the proportions aren't right sometimes they are sometimes they, it just doesn't match it doesn't work and every time i see a chainsaw or a blade or something being torn up it just looks like paint just spilling out everywhere over latex and foam i just it doesn't do it for me and it's like I'm not, it's not just because I'm desensitized. It, everyone's like, oh, it's so intense. It's grotesque. I don't know. It looks like paint to me. It, I just watched The Substance. That's a super gory film, but it has gore with meaning behind it. And so every like needle poke, everything like that, it feels more genuine. You really feel the characters. And I've gone into this before, but brutality is not just what you throw, show on screen. Brutality is all of the context built together. It's the character that's built up so that you care about them or you can hate them. You can hate the character, but they have to elicit some emotion so when something happens to them, you feel it. They can't just be cardboard cutouts. At least in my mind, that's what brutality is. The character, it's the scenario. So if they're walking into a room and... They're like about to be cut in half. You need to feel the room. You need to feel the ambience of the room. You need to feel the suspense, the tension of the scene, the tightness of the blade, you know, whatever, the, the sharpness of the blade, the tightness of like the, the line that's going to like cut them in half in the room, like ghost ship or whatever. You, know, you need to feel what's happening. You need to feel the anger behind the killer. You need to feel the sense of danger, the close proximity of the killer. There's so many different pieces, the way you shoot it, the way you light it, that come together to make brutality. It's the reactions of the characters. Also, this is a huge thing. Reactions from characters are so important. If I'm just sitting here and my leg is getting chopped off and I'm just like, but then you cut to a scene, a close up of my leg getting chopped up and it's just paint going everywhere. And I'm like, does that feel brutal? Does it feel like you're really cutting my leg off? Or is it just a close up of something that's completely unrelated to the film? Obviously, that's an extreme example. People and the actors in Terrifier three are not doing that, but there's so many reactions that don't make sense. There's so many times where I'm like, what is that even like happening to their leg or their arm? Because they're like, not even, they're just kind of like, ah, without going on too much of a tangent towards the later ha latter half of the film, the main character has a bunch of crap happen to her and a bunch of people are saying, oh, it's the craziest final girl, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, she has a bunch of stuff happen to her and then immediately acts like nothing happened to her. I don't know how I'm supposed to get behind a character who doesn't feel pain. She's not a final girl because she's invulnerable. Like if she's just impervious to pain or anything that happens to her, am I supposed to root for her? I don't understand. Like, or can you, like if she's supposed to be healed or is she supposed to feel like, what, what am I supposed to be feeling right now? Just because she can get stuff happen to her and then like act like nothing happens to her does that make her a good final girl there's just so many reactions from characters the little girl towards the latter half of this film oh my gosh just the family members the brother the reactions from everyone are just not human they're just so 
sit there and do something while I kill somebody. And that's exact. I feel like that's literally what Damien Leone, Leone is saying on set because half the time you're cutting away to a character and they're just like, like not knowing what to do for so long because you're waiting for art to be like, and they're just sitting there. And it's just like, that does not make an entertaining two hour long film to me. All right, my last negative is that the opening scene just absolutely is useless. And it just goes to show exactly what I've been saying. And I keep saying about Damien Leone as a writer and a director, he doesn't know how to write a feature film. He knows how to write pieces of things that get him from one thing to the other. And he has no ability to show restraint. He doesn't know how to cut down a film. He cut it down a little bit. It's still a two hour long, two hour long movie with a bunch of stuff that doesn't need to be there. And the entire opening scene doesn't need to be there, but he wanted to have an opening kill, an opening Christmas kill. So he had to put it in there. He couldn't cut it down. He couldn't make it quick and snappy like a scream opening. Nope. He had to pad the crap out of this thing and then have another opening to the film showing us backstory and then a time jump which also is not explained at all. Again, reiterating what I keep saying about reactions from characters, it's been five years and they act like it's been two days. There is just absolutely no character development, no writing, no nothing that shows any sort of progression at all in this film. There's a bunch of added story elements and stuff that they throw in there, a bunch of random backstory and stuff, but it doesn't tie together. It's just random crap thrown in there periodically throughout the film to get to pad out this two hour long runtime to get a bunch more kills in there. And that's exactly what Terrifier 3 is. And people are eating it up. Honestly, this is probably a terrible review and I'm trying not to get angry about this, but I'm just so frustrated that I feel like I'm going crazy that everyone is saying that this is genuinely like a good film. I mean, I've heard top 20 best horror films of all time. Everything I wanted and more. Can't wait to see it again. Better the second time around. Better the third time around. It's been out for like two days. I just have such a hard time believing that genuinely everyone really is enjoying it. I was just in a theater where I was in all the people in the audience were all the people in the world that didn't really enjoy Terrifier 3. I just happened to get in a, in a theater with a bunch of people and we we're the only ones in the entire world that didn't like this movie. I just... It makes me feel crazy. So that's where I'm like, I don't even know. You know, like I said, I could pick this movie apart. I just don't know what to say about this film besides the fact that it's really not good. That being said, as I've kind of mentioned, context is key. If you're scrolling through Shutter or scrolling through some streaming site and you found Terrifier 3, you'd probably be like, this is a really cool, crazy movie. How come no one's ever talk talked about this? I would probably say the same thing. I'd be like, this movie's boring. And it's not perfect, but there's some cool stuff in here. As I said, though, $2 million budget, sixth time we're seeing him on screen, theatrical release, big fan base, all of those things. If you were just scrolling through and this is the first time you stumbled upon this, that's a very different viewing experience from the viewing experience that we have. So you have to keep that in mind, and I try to keep that in mind as I'm reviewing this. I'm not saying that there's no redeeming qualities in this film at all, but man, Terrifier 3 should be a way better film than it is. Go ahead and rip me a new one in the comments, and I hope that you are having an awesome October so far. Take care. Got a money scared on a big bad wolf. Oh, I never see the silver line and only see the gold. I don't speak in caps, dog. Everything bold. And I put that on myself because it's a life that I done chose. I said, come through. You can see me on the west side. Now it's funny how they walking.